I think that disciples today watch the offerings of contemporary secular culture not as fans, but as doctors. This is a moment in terms of cultural product where we have to be gleaners. You know, they in, in the Bible, Ruth is gleaning. She's following the people who've done the harvest and she's picking up what they've left behind. She's like, okay, this one we can eat. Yeah, this one we can't. No, this one we can eat. I, I think that that should be the way we approach a lot of modern media. People tell me, are you shocked by all the gross or horrifying or dark stuff that's in the media. And I say, actually, no, I'm more shocked whenever I see something beautiful and holy and true and good, because I don't know where that's coming from. You know, it's coming out of the the human spirit somewhere. So uh, I think that uh, there's almost nothing that makes it to, you know, to get some critical acclaim that doesn't have something of merit in it. The industry knows when it does well, and when it makes something that's profound and thoughtful. And the genius of a lot of these shows today is showing the lostness of humanity, showing the suffering of a man without God, even if they're not conscious of that, that's what they're doing. Uh, a lot of these shows, you know, shows like Breaking Bad and The Wire and Homeland and um, um, I'd say Game of Thrones, absolutely House of Cards. These are all shows about postmodern man on his own floundering around and the kind of depths of depravity and sin that that results from that man alone without spirituality insofar as you're looking at it with that in mind to see you can you can really be deepened by some of this stuff and and really come to appreciate the suffering of man without god from some of these shows whether they mean to say it or not that would be how as a disciple i would watch a lot of these shows Having said that, that, there is a level of coarseness to all of these shows, and, and very often secular filmmakers don't have a mandate to do good, uh, so they're not concerned with, should I show that, will that harm the audience at all? So the audience has to be self-censoring in that sense and say, yeah, is this, uh, is this scenes in this movie going to overshadow the good that I'm going to get out of this? Is it going to... Um, is it going to rob me of my innocence or, or really, uh, is it going to make me tilt towards nihilism and cynicism? For me, a show like House of Cards, for example, I just found the show way too cynical and I couldn't watch it, even though the performances were amazing and they had some, some fabulous stuff about politics and what it does to people. In the end, I just found it way too cynical, and I knew a steady diet of that wasn't going to be good for me. But I watched enough to be able to talk about the show and be able to talk with people who love the show about what you know what is it that uh, is happening here, and kind of use it as a moment to see if I can move them towards the good. Uh, but so that's that's how it is. I think that disciples today watch the offerings of contemporary secular culture not as fans, but as doctors. We, these are the signs of our times. Jesus said to his apostles, can you not read the signs of the times? We have to be able to read the signs of the times and say, okay, what is it the people of our day are asking now? What are they worried about? Uh, what are their uh, concerns that are coming out in the stories that they're telling themselves? And I'll tell you one thing that's very abundantly clear. The younger generation is completely obsessed right now with dystopian themes, right? The end of it all, the lack of authority, the 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 absence of any anybody who's right or trustworthy, this is the theme in so much of the stories that are appealing to people in their late teens, uh, 20s. Uh, this is what's speaking to them. That's a moment for the church to pay attention to that. Say, wow, uh, for this whole generation uh, that we're talking about right now, they don't think anybody's in charge. They don't think anybody has anything to offer them that really can help. Uh, that's a sign, uh, that's a moment for evangelization, it's a moment of grace if we could pay attention to it. But in order to pay attention to it, you have to have your eyes open. You have to pay attention, you have to see what's out there. Uh, and again, I think we do that in a clinical way, we do it in a diagnostic way, we don't uh, sink into the fan thing and, and, uh, and just put our, our lives and our souls in the hands of a lot of these shows. I think for Catholic parents right now, this challenge is... I have to prepare my child to take their place as a disciple in this culture, in this cultural moment. 
and so they can't be aliens in their own time. They can't feel like they're watching through the window of their own era. Uh, the, your kids have in their hearts all the confusions and, and mistakes and errors of it, their time. They're people of their time. So you don't want to shield them from their own cultural moment. Having said that, you do have an obligation to preserve their innocence and to shape their journey as long as they are under your care. So uh, when you know to expose them to more nuanced depictions of evil, well, it's going to be every child's different. You know, when I was younger, I was reading Charles Dickens in the fifth and sixth grade. So I was in a different place than a lot of my friends were. They were reading Nancy Drew. I was prepared to read uh, Dr. Zhivago and, and uh, books by Taylor Caldwell by the time I got into high school, um, things that were more less nuanced about sin. So there does have to be this progression where you move children from very black and white, uh, clear, uh, evil and good, in, uh, into a much more nuanced sense of things uh, that better happen. I would be very concerned as a parent to find coming-of-age movies for my kid. You know, movies like Lean on Me and uh, Stand by Me and uh, Dead Poets Society. Uh, these about people transitioning from childhood into adulthood. It used to be a genre that we almost don't see made anymore. It's very rare to see good coming-of-age movies, but I would seek them out for my uh, for my children. So yeah, you got to protect your kids and uh, protect their innocence, but always with uh, the eye to preparing them for their role to be uh, apostles in this culture. Too many Catholic families are preparing their kids to be disciples to 1823. And, and this is no good at all. They're going to be absolutely either um, fear bound by the time they get out from under your, uh, your authority, or they're going to go crazy and embrace everything because they haven't been able to discern what's good. So, so one thing I would do is watch stuff with, uh, with my teenagers would say, what are your what are your friends watching? All right, let's watch it. Let's talk about it. What do you think? You know, uh, and, and, and that takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of patience. And most of us, it's so much easier just to ban everything and say, yeah, well, we're not going to watch television because there's bad stuff there. I think it's a much more patient enterprise being a Catholic parent today uh, than in other days, which is ironic because we have all this technology to make things easier, but it's just made so many more options available and possible to our kids that we have to be vigilant uh, to kind of help them script their journey, but we can't put a blanket over them and throw them in a cave and think that that's keeping them safe. Uh, this makes them useless as disciples and also uh, it, it cuts them off from the real growth that they, they should get from the stories. Um, and the art that's being told to the people of their time.